Hi there, this is David, and today I want to talk about party composition in Dragon Quest 3. What are some good parties that you can put together? How do the party and classes kind of synergize together? What are some great combinations? What are some different esoteric combinations, some unique combinations that you might want to try? And I do think that that's worth a sub as I try my hardest at 100,000 subscribers. And with your help, your like, and your sub, I just know that I can get there as we go through all these different job class combinations and kind of put together what we might think might work. And just as an FYI, all the footage that you do see here in this video is straight off of my my Nintendo Switch. This is an NES game after all at heart to me, so it just makes sense to play the Switch version of this classic. Now, here are five great job class combinations that you can try to get through this game. And a huge shout out and thank you to Instagame for sponsoring this video. Whenever you can buy your games on the cheap for the PC, the PlayStation, the Xbox, or even the Nintendo Switch, you can go ahead and get gift cards, discounted here if you would like. You can buy some fabulous games here like Metaphor on sale for 19% off at $59.65. Some Square Enix games like Romancing Saga 2 is also 20% off at $42.15. Or even the titular Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, which is 21% off here at $50.16. Just go onto this website, you click the links below, you get the code, and boom, you can buy it for whatever platform you want to. So thank you so much again, Insta Gaming, and now let's get back to the video. First up, we got that classic party of the Warrior, the Priest, and the Mage. This is definitely your basic party, but you'll have all of your bases covered with the well-rounded attributes of the hero, along with the tanking and brute force power of the warrior, then of course, the magical backup of the priest and the mage. If you're just looking for one of those parties that will easily take you from the beginning of the game straight up to the end, without having to worry about any sort of like esoteric strategies, then this one here is easily the one. Once that class change comes up though, I would highly suggest turning the warrior into a sage and then turning the priest and the mage into some sort of like fighting class. That way, all three of your characters have access to white and black magical spells. Well, then you'll also have two more physical fighters for the tougher battles ahead. At that point, with all your spells and your bases covered, you can use some of the stranger classes and just play around with them if you really want to. Next up, we have the Odd Couple, the Monster Wrangler, the Merchant, and the Mage. I call this one the Odd Couple because, quite frankly, it is a little bit on the strange side. However, the synergy together here definitely works. The hero, as always, is there to cover all of your bases because you might be worried that without a priest, you'll lack capable healing. But I think that you'll find that the Monster Wrangler's healing abilities, as well as the merchant's ability to call back the previous shop that you've been to, like an item shop or the inn or whatever, not to mention the hero's healing spells, all together will cover healing perfectly fine. Not to mention, the wizard has that buffing line of spells to increase your defense against physical hits. And the monsters, they'll pretty much just get sliced through like a hot knife through butter. I mean, all the physical fighters here can both equip boomerangs and whips, so those randoms will die with the quickness. Add to that the monster wrangler's variety of utility and the mage's black magic spells to exploit weaknesses and just blast the enemies to smithereens, and you won't be having any problems with the random encounters here. Once the class change rolls around, I would definitely turn that merchant into a sage, and then probably turn the mage into a fighter. That way, you'll have access to that white priest magic, as well as a super quick character who excels at critical hits, and you can cast some important black magic before the enemies get their turns off, like getting in that increase or an oomph in battle. This here is a winner. The third one is the Long Haul. The warrior, the fighter, and the gadabout. Let me be real for a hot second here because, you know, the gadabout sucks. And honestly, I really don't wanted to recommend him at all, but I felt like I needed to cover every single job class in this video because, you know, this is going over party composition, so I figured every single job class needs their time in the sun. But the thing is, the gadabout, he's just an uncontrollable idiot who just does whatever it is that he wants to do. And half the time, he ends up hurting himself for the rest of the party. And not only that, unlike the other job classes, he only gets worse as he levels up. Which is why you're definitely wanting to go to change him into a sage whenever you do get over to All Trades Abbey. Thankfully though, they do level up pretty quickly, 
and you won't even need the words of wisdom from the tower north of the abbey in order to change into a sage, because that is the class's silver lining. The gadabout is the only job class that can change into a sage without needing any other outside help. Before you do get there though, you'll have to drag this little bum along with you, and that's why I recommend bringing along the very tanky and powerful warrior, as well as the fighter, to help and assist you along the way. And then, once you do change him into a sage, you won't need to change anybody else's job if you don't want to, because you'll have everything covered. Then we have the random destroyers, the thief, the merchant, and the priest. If you're looking for a party that excels at taking out huge, large, random encounters, then look no further than this, because every single character here is able to attack multiple monsters on the field with the hero's use of the boomerangs, as well as the thieves' and merchants' use of whips and boomerangs, and then the priest is there for his backup, with their whoosh line of spells, hitting groups of enemies with wind damage, and quickly too, because the priest can end up getting his wind spells as early as level 4, while the poor mage is still suffering with crack as whack, he's not going to get an all-hitting group spell to like level 10. Then, the priest also has the defense-lowering sap line of spells, which is so important to use against the bosses so that your physical fighters can do what they do best, which is dish out the damage. And with his healing, you'll be pretty much unstoppable too. So, whenever you do get over to the class change, I would encourage you to change the priest over into a fighter. That way you'll have a single target great attacker, while then changing the merchant over into a sage. That way you'll have access to black magic as well, and then probably just kind of keeping the thief as is. I mean, his whips are just killer, and that tiptoe ability that reduces random encounters is invaluable. And then finally, number five, the Speed Queens. The Thief, the Fighter, and the Monster Wrangler. This one could be a fun one, and it's the only party that I've really recommended without access to traditional magic spells for support. So instead, you're going to have to rely on some brute force. And of course, you know, your speed to get through all these encounters. And these here are the three fastest job classes bar none. Your thief will be able to hit a ton of enemies with their whips, while the fighter comes in clutch with his great critical hits. Then there's your jack of all trades monster wrangler, who's able to cover multiple bases, with boomerangs to hit multiple enemies and abilities that will more than likely allow him to be your dedicated healer, along with the hero. Then, by the time that you do hit all trades abbey, I am sure that you will want to change one of them into a sage though, and I would personally choose the thief. That way, you'll have a really quick caster to boot. This party is all about the quickness, and with both white and black magical spells flying off in the very first turn, backed by some physical damage and utility, the enemies won't even know what hit them. It's so good. Thank you all so much for watching, and I just have to ask, what are your favorite job class combinations, and how would you put together a party that synergizes perfectly? Let me know in the comments, and let's all talk and chat about some really cool party combinations and setups, because it's just fascinating to me. I do hope that you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, here's another video that I really do think that you'll get a kick out of, so please be sure to check that one out, and as always, have a good day.